What's going on everybody? Hope everyone is doing well. My name is Jason and in today's video we're going to be previewing the East Final between the Montreal Alouettes and the Toronto Argonauts. A repeat of last year's East Final where the Toronto Argonauts beat the Alouettes. Let's see if the Alouettes can get the upset this time around against the heavily favored Argos. So the Argos and Alouettes met three times this season. The first being in week six where the Argos won a very entertaining game. I think this would be if I had to make a list, and I might make a video on this, uh, one of the best games of the regular season this year. They win 35-27 to at Montreal in a back-and-forth affair. Um, Chad Kelly was really good in that game, uh, but ultimately, at the end of the day, Toronto prevails. In Week 14, they meet again. Toronto wins 39-10, to um, this time at BMO Field. Right from the jump of that game, it really wasn't close. You know, the Argos just were in a class of their own that day, and they win that game at BMO Field. Then a week later in week 15, their third and final meeting, Toronto wins again, 23-20. to Much closer game this time. And this was actually the last meaningful game of the Argos season this year. Um, they clinched the East with that win at Montreal. So they go 3-0 against Montreal on the season. Now in terms of the quarterback matchup in this one, it looks a little bit lopsided. But I think Cody Fajardo's had a pretty good season for the Alouettes. 16 games played, 3,897 passing yards. 14 touchdowns, 12 interceptions, completing 71% of his passes. I think that Fajardo's done a good job being a dual threat quarterback as well. Took off and run a couple times um, in that game against Hamilton. He took off and got at least three first downs. I think my pal Evan Wilsmore, who I do the Mark Cash show with every week, was pointing that out. So I think Fajardo's done a really good job steadying the ship in Montreal this season. It definitely could have turned out a lot worse for the Alouettes quarterback situation after the departure of Trevor Harris. Uh, but he's going to have to play very well in this one if the Alouettes want to win on the road at BMO. Now, in terms of Chad Kelly, on the other hand, for the Argos, 16 games played, 4,123 passing yards, 23 touchdown passes, 12 interceptions, completing 69% of his passes. So slightly less uh, completion percentage for Kelly as opposed to Cody Fajardo, but I think at the end of the day, uh, Chad Kelly's had the far superior season. Um, he's been able to push the ball downfield a lot more than Fajardo has. The Argos offense a lot more explosive uh, than the more methodical offense you see in Montreal. So I think that's one of the keys uh, to this game, and we'll get to it when we talk about the matchups, but I think you know creating those explosive plays and the quarterbacks uh, pressing the ball down the field, I think is going to be very important in this game. Now, in terms of the team stats, once again, you know, points, points against, passing offense, rush offense, passing defense, and rushing defense are the categories I'm using. But like I said, there's so many more statistics you can go into, say that every video. Now, in terms of points per game, uh, the Argos have the edge here, 32.8 points per game, which was second in the CFL this season, only slightly less than the Winnipeg Blue Bombers average. Uh, Montreal was fourth in the league with 24.6 points per game. Uh, you know, pretty good offensive showing from them this year. I think at the end of the day, um, you know, I wasn't expecting a great offense coming into the season, but they've certainly been better than I expected. So at the end of the day, you know, a pretty big gap between those two teams when you look at the actual numbers there. You know, they're averaging about, you know, what, seven points more per game. But I think at the end of the day, um, the Alouettes are a team that's capable of putting up their fair share of points as well. Now, in terms of the defensive side with points against, the Alouettes actually have a slight advantage here. 21.8 points allowed per game, which was second in the CFL only again to Winnipeg this year. Uh, Toronto was third in the CFL with exactly 22 points allowed per game. So literally a 0.2 point um, allowed per game difference between these two teams. So I think at the end of the day, um, not much to separate the defenses on either side of this matchup. I think it's really going to come down to the offense. Now, speaking of the offense, passing offense, the Argos have the edge here, 264.3 passing yards per game, which is third in the CFL, whereas the Alouettes are sixth in the CFL with 228.7. So um, that's a bit of an edge for the Argos. Um, you know, I think they're, like I said, a more explosive offense. Their receivers average way more yards per catch. So, you know, DeMonte Coxie and, uh, you know, Devaris Daniels having huge seasons for them. So I think at the end of the day, that's definitely an advantage for the Argos. In terms of rushing offense, the Argos average about 10 yards more per game, 113.7, which is fourth in the CFL this season, whereas the Alouettes were fifth in the league, 103.4 yards per game on the ground. Obviously, the Alouettes have guys 
that can hurt you in that regard as well. I think, uh, you know, um, you know, AJ Olette is the guy that does most of the damage for the Argos, but you also have to remember they have Andrew Harris there. Uh, for the Alouettes, like I was saying, they have, you know, William Stanback. They got Walter Fletcher, another American running back that can come in. Jeshwin Antwies had some good reps the last couple of years. So I think at the end of the day, the running games for these two teams are very impressive this season. Now switching back over to defense with the passing defense, the Alouettes have a pretty big advantage here, actually. 223.5 yards per game allowed through the air for them this season, which was second in the CFL. And then Toronto's actually eighth in the CFL with 273.4 yards per game allowed through the air this season. So if you want to pick one hole in this Argos team, it might be their tendency to give up big plays in the secondary. Uh, they do take the ball over a lot, which obviously I don't account for here with uh, the statistics I put on the board here. But I think at the end of the day, um, you know, the Argos uh, secondary has given up some big plays this year. So I think it's going to be up to the Alouettes and if they can exploit those. Um, now, in terms of rush defense, the Argos have the edge here, 83.6 yards allowed per game on the ground which is first in the CFL so I mean those running backs are going to be tested for the Alouettes all game long and then the Alouettes are fifth in the CFL in run defense 110.4 yards per game on the ground allowed by them so uh, both very talented defenses but like I said I think that Alouettes um, uh, offense going up against that Toronto secondary may be a matchup to watch and who can win that matchup uh, may decide if this game is much closer than a lot of people are anticipating. Now in terms of the matchups I'm watching for in this one I've highlighted three. The Montreal defensive line against that Toronto offensive line that has been so good this season. The Alouettes defensive line are no slouches either. They've been a very consistent unit this year. Obviously, with the addition of Sean Lemon has made them much more scary. But those defensive tackles, Sewell and Mustafa Johnson, I think, have done a really good job this season complementing each other. And then, you know, on the other side, you got um, uh, other defensive ends that rotate in there and produce for the Alouettes. So I think it's going to be a really good matchup. I think if the Alouettes defensive line can have a really strong game in this one, they're going to have a really good chance of winning this game because I like their matchups otherwise I think their defensive backs actually match up pretty well with Toronto's receivers relative to the other teams in the league so I think at the end of the day if they can win that matchup on the defensive line it would be huge and then on the other side of the ball my second matchup here is wide receiver Austin Mack for the Montreal Alouettes going up against those Toronto defensive backs like I said have allowed a lot of yards through the air this season so I think they're going to be tested uh, by Austin Mack he's really the scariest receiver that the Alouettes have on that side of the ball so I'm really interested to see uh, what happens in that matchup if Austin Mack can have a huge game in this one I think he's going to be a necessity to have a big game if the Alouettes want to win now my third and final matchup is also on that side of the ball and that's William Standback um, you know running back for the Alouettes who has uh, picked up steam the last couple of weeks of the season really good game last week uh, can he have one of those vintage games against that Toronto running defense, which uh, obviously was first in the CFL this season? I think it would be huge for the Alouettes to establish a ground game early in this one and uh, you really limit the amount of possessions that that Argos offense ultimately gets. So at the end of the day, that is just a little bit of a breakdown of this matchup of the East Final between the Montreal Alouettes and the Toronto Argonauts. Be sure to let me know your pick down below. I will personally be taking Toronto in this one. I said this during my playoff predictions video the other week, so if you guys want to hear my reasoning a little bit further, uh, go check out that video. But I think at the end of the day, I'm going to go with Toronto to win this game. I think it should be a good game, a much closer game than people are expecting. But I think at the end of the day, I think Toronto takes it. And uh, you guys will have to let me know down in the comment section what you think. With that said, I hope you guys have a great day, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.